Hi everyone! I'm Bartholomew the Bookworm. Wow, now that was an adventure. I bet you have never seen a worm with a parachute before. I think I may be the first worm in the world. And what would Sir James Martin think? Look at all those puzzled faces. Hmm, you are all wondering who James Martin is. Let me introduce you to Sir James Martin, inventor of the ejector seat. Sir James Martin has a really interesting story. And, of course, I am a bookworm, so no better worm to tell it. <laughs> Let me take you all the way back to 1893. James Martin was descended from a Scottish family that had been present in the local area, County Down, Northern Ireland. Since at least the 1630s, he also had ancestors from other Ulster Scots families, such as the Coulters and McClurgs, who, like the Martins, attended local Presbyterian churches. The Presbyterian Church was established in Ulster by Scottish settlers from the 1640s onwards. Welcome to Crossgar, County Down, Northern Ireland. Aww. Isn't he cute? And loud. Let's skip forward a bit, quickly. As you can see, James got his inventing streak from his dad, who unfortunately passed away when James was just two years old. But that did not stop James. As a boy, he loved tinkering, just like his dad. All this tinkering helped him to become a very exciting experienced engineer. He was actually offered a place at Queen's University, Belfast, but he turned it down as he preferred inventing. Well, let me take you to 1934. By this time, James had set up his own company and had built an aeroplane. Meet Captain Val Baker. Captain Val Baker joined James's company as chief test pilot as the company had now progressed to designing fighter planes for the RAF. Check these out. The MB2 in 1938 and the MB3 was to replace the famous Hurricane and Spitfire fighters. Now, this is the sad part. The MB3 was first flown by Captain Val Baker in 1942. But in September of that year, during a flight, the engine seized and he was killed trying to land in a small field. This affected James <laughs> deeply and continued to be a massive problem during the Battle of Britain, when many pilots sadly lost their lives as they were unable to escape the cockpit when their planes were damaged. But James had a plan. His first attempt involved a powerful spring and a swinging arm to propel the pilot away from the plane. This idea was a great success and he was given support from the Ministry of Aircraft Production to develop it further. James then progressed to testing the idea of using explosives to forcefully propel a pilot out of a plane. However, he was not sure how the body would react. He tested it in many ways. He used test dummies, sandbags and human volunteers in rigs. So after all the testing, I Bet you want to see how he got the ejector seat to actually work. Let's check out the science. Ejector seats all work using forces. Step one, the pilot pulls the ejection handle. This sets off a chain of events. Step two, explosive bolts fire to blast the canopy away from the aircraft. Step 
three. A rocket motor pack underneath the seat propels the seat to between 60 to 90 meters above the aircraft. This is all made possible by the force of acceleration, which is measured in terms of G or gravity forces. The more force you apply to an object, the greater the rate of acceleration. And the more mass the object has, the lower the rate of acceleration. So careful calculations about body weight and speed have to be carried out. Step four, an explosive catapult deploys a small drogue parachute from the seat to slow it down. Step five, when the seat is lower than 5,500 meters, the built-in sensors deploy the main parachute. The pilot then detaches from the seat and can descend slowly to the ground. More forces come into play here, gravity and air resistance. Without a parachute, there is not enough air resistance to prevent gravity from pulling the pilot towards the earth dangerously fast. But when the parachute opens, air resistance increases. This slows the parachute down to help the pilot land safely. James had to test the force carefully to ensure that the pilot's body could cope with the power. The first live shot was undertaken by Bernard Lynch in 1946. After that, the Martin Baker ejector seats were fitted to all US carrier-borne aircraft. James never stopped inventing and continued to develop the ejector seat, making sure it could be used at high speeds, different altitudes, and even underwater. Wow, now that is what I call a lifesaver. Wow, I really learned a lot today. I can't wait to see you on my next adventure. <laughs>